opening section. So good morning to all of you. And we start this uh, morning question, uh, morning section this morning with uh, our friends Zhao Bing Xin from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, so please, Zhao Bing, okay. it is a pleasure to have you here with us during all the week and today for your seminar. Thank, okay. thank, thank you, you again. Thank you. Uh, so first, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for giving me this chance to celebrate Piro's 70th birthday. Uh, I knew Piro when I was a student in Ann Arbor. Uh, so I think that, that year he was uh, visiting Taiping in Maryland with his sabbatical. He came to uh, Ann Arbor to give a, a seminar. So I was a student of Joe Smaller. And so I have a chance to meet him. And I found him, he was uh, extremely friendly and extremely energetic as what he is right now. And uh, so we, we meet each other and then we were discussing about uh, typing the paper on stability of viscous shock waves. And uh, somehow we have a very, very, very good uh, conversation and uh, Piro was the first Italian mathematician who invited me to Italy. And since then, I met many, many Italian friends. And the first conference actually, Piro organized with uh, Mario and uh, it was 1989. And I came to Rome and uh, met many great mathematicians and some of them from Italian origin. And uh, that's Became my long time interactions with the uh, Italian Mathematical Society. So, and uh, since then I got here and uh, friendship and uh, with Piro for not a very short time. Yeah. So uh, today I'm uh, going to talk on the existence of multi dimensional compressible MHD counter discontinuity. And I thank uh, Paulo who gave a lecture yesterday. So on the MHD equations, I don't have to go too much on the background. So this is a, a joint work I, I did with uh, Yan Jing Wang. He used to, to be my postdoctor, and we have uh, a long time collaboration on MHD equations and free interface problems. Now. OK, so contact discontinuity uh, together with shocks and rarefaction waves are the basic waves for system of hyperbolic conservation laws, uh, such a way are ca characterized as piecewise smooth solution with a strong characteristic discontinuity at the interface. And so the interface here is, let's say, we draw this uh, interface in space, in space, sigma t, which separated the, let's say, the fluids from the upper, upper one, omega plus to omega minus, which varies with time t. And uh, so, uh, in general case, these are piecewise smooth solutions, and the global is a weak solution. So therefore, across this discontinuity, you have to satisfy some kind of uh, reckoning dot conditions. So the most important the typical example will be compressed by all equations, the conservation mass, momentum, and energy. So I write down this in terms of entropy. Uh, so I was given the equation of states, which uh, was introduced in this conference many times. So this is a prototype system of hyperbolic conservation now. And to be a global weak solution across this continuity, and you have to satisfy the RH condition, right? So which means uh, the mass transfer flux has a low jump, which I, I did not here to be the, uh, ma uh, the mass transfer flux, which density times the normal velocity of the fluids minus the no normal velocity of the surface. The n will be the normal vector, and the tau will be tangential directions. So this uh, uh, jumping condition, no jump, no jump in the uh, mass stream of flux, and then the, ten the normal velocity jumps is balanced by the pressure jump. And also the tangential velocity jumps multiply the mass stream of flux is equal to zero. And similarly, the jump in, in the entropy times the 
mass spin plus is also equal to zero. Okay, then this this kind of can be classified into two classes. First, there's no mass transfer plus. In this case, to have this continuity, then you don't have any jump in density either. Okay, in this case, we, we come to the shock waves. And the, the typical property, the shock wave is always a negative state. Okay, and another case is the mass transfer plus equals zero. That's, that means that there's no mass across the, the surface. Okay, in this case, then we come to the contact discontinuity because in this case, if there's no, uh, no mass uh, transfer flux, then we must, from the second equation, the jump across pressure must be zero. That means the pressure from the two sides must be balanced. Okay, so then we have only two kinds of uh, discontinuity. One is the tangential discontinuity, that it means uh, you have the velocity difference across the surface with the vertex shades. Or you have the normal discontinuity, which means you have no tangential discontinuity, okay? And in this case, you do not have discontinuity at all for velocity field. So the only discontinuity, then you have no discontinuity in, in velocity, you have no discontinuity in pressure, the only discontinuity will be density and the entropy. So such a case because the entropy away. Okay, you have two kinds of uh, contact discontinuities. So that's for the pure fluids. And then another important class of conservation now will be MHD. The compressible MHD is that it coupled that uh, the fluids equation with the magnetic fields. So which already been introduced by Professor Sechi uh, yesterday that we coupled the fluids equation with the Maxwell equation uh, in the equation for here. And so the momentum equation will, will be affected by Lorentz force. So in this case, we have the, the last term is not, not only plasma pressure, it also have the magnetic uh, pressure together. So that's what uh, uh, Q, Professor uh, uh, Sech introduced yesterday, total pressure. So this is the MHD. Why MHD condition also, the RH condition. And then you can prove that uh, easily, there's no mass transfer flux, okay? Sorry, the mass, the mass transfer flux has no jumps. Okay, also you can show the normal component of magnetic field has no jumps. Okay, and uh, the normal velocity jump is balanced by the jump of the total pressure the from the fluid pressure plus the magnetic field pressure. And uh, then the tangential velocity is balanced by the tangential jump of the magnetic field. Uh, similarly, so what I write down here. Now, actually, there are interesting cases. They also can, you also can classify the surfaces by using whether the mass transfer flux is equal to zero or not. Okay, first, if you assume that there, there is a mass transfer. Okay, so in this case, if there's, there's a jump in density, so if there's no jump in the density, which doesn't have any pure fluids, it happens in MHD. And in this case, if the magnetic field is transversal, that because there's no jump in the normal direction of, of the magnetic field. If this guy is non-zero, that means you have uh, this transversal magnetic field. Then this case, we get a so-called uh, rotational alpha wave, which you do never see. It's kind of a shock wave, but it's uh, rotational. It's, we won't see that for pure fluids. Okay, so in this case, you have mass transfer uh, through the interface that you have a, a so-called RFN discontinuity. Another class is uh, there's no mass transfer. So the G is equal to zero. Then very similar to the fluids case, we have two cases. One, which is uh, tangential discontinuity. That means uh, you have the, there's, you have the normal velocity, the fluids is the same, as the surface, okay, speed. So there's no jump, and uh, also the normal with the normal magnetic field is equal to zero. That means the magnetic field is parallel to the surface, and the uh, and also the total pressure is balanced, and the discontinuity is in the tangential velocity field. So in this case, it's called a current of sheets. It's very much like what sheets in the fluids case. Then another one is the, the case that the 
the magnetic field is transversal. I mean, no more direction of the magnetic field is different from zero. In this case, you can prove there's no discontinuity in the velocity field at all. There's no discontinuity in the pressure. There's no magnetic field. The only discontinuity is in density in the entropy. So this is called an astrophysical plasma, which happens in a, uh, or MHD kind of discontinuity, which happens in one of the picture which uh, uh, Professor Paulo said she just was showing you yesterday, and the, the magnetic field is transversal uh, through the surface, and which happens in the astrophysical phenomena, quite important. Okay, so these are the typical discussion. So the fact is, contact discontinuity for the Euler equation you know, without a magnetic field are subject to both Kelvin Hormoz instability or radiohead instability. This often leads to ill positives. Okay, so the uh, in, in, in fact, for incompressible fluids, you know, starting from Ebbin in the 80s, and for compressible case, uh, Yang Guo's group, and they shown in, in, in both these cases, uh, in most cases, you get ill positives, even short, short time. And there's very, some very special cases, two-dimensional compressible water shades. It's a surprise thing eh? that if you look at the two-dimensional compressible water shades, and in this case, the boundary condition is given by six, which means uh, that the speed is the same as the normal velocity of the fluids, and uh, the pressure has not jumped. In this case, you can show that the velocity has now jumped uh, in the normal direction. This guy form an elliptic system for the front function, but in a very similar analysis as what Chapolo said showed yesterday. And the condition, and under the condition that uh, the tangential components has a jump. Because this uh, elipticity for the front function, you can prove in a two-dimensional case, if the Maha number is bigger than square root two, you have a local existence of uh, solution for compressible word shades, which is quite surprising because we know for the incompressible case, it's purely unstable. We do not have even a local existence of solution for incompressible shades in two dimension or in three dimension without other physical effect taking into account. So the compressibility somehow helps you in this case. The Maha number bigger helps you in the 2D case. But this turns out only true for two dimensional. In 3D or in high D, it doesn't work at all. And uh, in fact, I mean, you, you can show uh, in the 3D water shades or the even subsonic 2D water shades, they are all unstable. By Einstein means doing a linear, linear rather stability analysis. Okay, so therefore, for the pure fluids, what is sheets problem uh, get stabilized only when you have, well, people proved you have to have additional physical effects. For example, one of the famous ones is you put on these perceived effects, such as surface tension. Okay, so there is a result by, recent result by, uh, scholar Kotan uh, uh, and Chen and also Shata Zen, they prove an incompressible case. If you add uh, surface tension on, no matter what the sheets problem, all the, uh, all the other, other discontinuity, they all get uh, stabilized. You get local well positives. But compressible case, you do two statements, uh, they prove the similar theory. So the question is, without other additional effects, then what's going to happen? Well, if you turn on magnetic field, as a surprising two-dimensional result for the vacuum plasma problem, the magnetic field, magnetic field in fact, sometimes hurts you. The question, in what extent and what condition will help you? Let's look first at the water sheets problem. For the water sheets problem, and uh, then the current water sheets satisfy the equation seven. Then you can check in this condition that the, the magnetic field is parallel to the neutral phase. 
for what is she, the current what she's problem. This actually forms a elliptic system for the front function under the condition that this magnetic field from, from two sides are, are not collinear. The analysis is very much similar to what uh, uh, Professor Sachi uh, pr uh, presented yesterday. Okay, as long as the, the, the magnetic field from both sides are not collinear, even though they are parallel to the surface, but they are not collinear, then you can show the front function set by the elliptic equation. So therefore, you have a re elliptic regularity for the interface problem. And this tells you under this condition, you might have a stability effect. Indeed, and uh, there are two groups, uh, people, for example, uh, Guixian Chen, uh, Yang Wang Wang, and also Xu uh, They were independently proved. As long nice as these uh, magnetic fields from both sides are non-collinear, non plus some technical condition, but the main condition is this uh, not collinear. Then they can prove a local well for them. The com in the first case is slightly more difficult. Uh, just collinear, non-collinear non is not enough. So the famous condition is the Cyril-Ross condition. Cyril-Ross condition is what, what happened here. This condition is called the Cyril-Ross condition, which tells you beyond the non-collinear condition, you have to ask that uh, the magnetic field somehow is stronger than the blue part. Okay, under this condition, you can prove, in fact, that the problem is uh, uh, locally well posed. There are two important results, one is by the, our, our Italian friends, and uh, another one is by the, the, the group in Beijing University. Okay, they did a very nice work on this one. Anyway, so this shows to you the tangential magnetic field somehow helps you. Because without magnetic field, we know what the sheet problem in general is completely is ill posed, unstable, but this uh, this uh, this can this uh, tangential magnetic field, in fact, can overcome the chemical Holmes instability to in some extent. Okay, so then the problem: How about the MHD counter discontinuity? Because in, if you go there and then as I mentioned before, that uh, the this uh, tangential magnetic field is parallel to the surface was important, which give you the, which, which, which was, which give you ellipticity. So therefore for the MHD kind of discontinuity, we, by definition, the magnetic field is transversal. Okay, it cannot be tangential to the magnetic field. And, and if you check that, indeed, the system eight do not give you any ellipticity for the front function for the interface. So therefore, for a long time, people believe there's no local well positiveness in the regular superlip spaces because of this, there's no any kind of ellipticity. Just look at the, uh, this equation eight, okay? If you do the linear stability analysis, you get an unusual linear stable, but you could have linear, uh, you could have linear radiated instability. But you don't know how to prevent that. Okay. But the key point is that this this uh, equation eight do not contain any elliptic for the front function. Okay. So therefore, people think this one is uh, could be a very difficult problem. And uh, also, uh, if you uh, listen to the Paulo's talk yesterday, the, the many times the approach for this kind of problem is using mesh mouse iteration. If we do linear stability analysis, you will lose the replicates. Okay, and uh, therefore, the, 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 even the weapon, if you got, are not in the same space. Okay, so, so therefore, uh, we want to understand, can the magnetic field prevent the linear radiated instability? Okay, of course, this, we are not the first group to look at this problem. The, our Italian friends, Miranda, Trinkin, and the Russian, uh, Trinkini, they started this problem much earlier than us. And they, they indeed, they prove the following interesting result. So in two dimensional case, if you also put a one more condition, you ask the uh, additional relative hand sign condition, which I will tell you a little bit later, then you can prove in a two dimensional case, the problem is locally well posed, even though you lose the derivative, but you still get a well posedness. 
Okay, the basic approach is very much uh, similar to what uh, Professor Sesh discussed yesterday, and they do the linear stability analysis and do do very good symmetrization, and uh, then you uh, do the Nash Morse iteration, and then you using this uh, red hand sign to kill some of the terms. In fact, when they, uh, of course, if you put substitution on, there's no problem at all. So indeed, then they all they actually conjecture that uh, the Tedis red hand sign condition must be a less sufficient condition for the problem. But uh, even with the red hand sign condition, they found out for the 3D case, they cannot overcome the terms, uh, even do the tangential estimate. There are terms coming from boundary which cannot be overcome by the uh, Tedis sign condition. So therefore, the problem was uh, uh, left open uh, for the three dimensional case. And so that's actually where we get interested in the problem. We say, well, can we solve the problem without a leak condition? The reason why we think that way because uh, by definition, the IMHD contact is continuity. You have this blue line here, which is that uh, the magnetic field is transversal to the interface. And uh, we did uh, some work before on the uh, the vacuum inter uh, plasma interface problem, uh, we found that the transversality of a magnetic field, in fact, has quite a strong stabilization effects. We, we, we want, want to say whether it is possible, just using this blue, this fact, this guy transversal to the surface, is enough to overcome all the instabilities, to prove the problem actually is, is well possible without any condition. Could it be in any dimension too? And that's uh, our goal. Then in fact, what we show, indeed, it is possible. We can prove the well poisonous in both 2D and 3D without any condition, in the same sobrative space, without losing your gravity. Okay, so that's the work uh, uh, Yan Jin and I did, which uh, uh, will appear soon, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit, how can we make use of this, uh, uh, how do we make use of this uh, magnetic field transversal, and which is enough for us to overcome the difficulties encountered in such a uh, interface problem? So, in the following discussion, I will uh, take the to simplify the the presentation. I will assume that in the horizontal direction, just periodic, and uh, in, the, in the vertical direction, from like one to one, and my interface is just something in between. Okay, the interface given by sigma t is nice in the below and above, and uh, the upper boundary and lower boundary is fixed boundary, satisfy some physical boundary condition, uh, such as in, in the impermeable and the perfect conducting, and uh, so forth and so on. And my initial surface is not in between. And in fact, our result can be uh, applied to many other cases. Our analysis uh, depends crucially on the Lagrange formulation. We do know how to do this problem in the Olaron context. The Lagrange formulation for us, we cannot do as what uh, Paul, uh, Paul um, did yesterday, that if we were just using the flat and the free, free surface, we, can, we cannot go anywhere. And for us, this Lagrange formulation is crucial. Uh, otherwise, we cannot do anywhere. So therefore, we do the Lagrange, Lagrange formulation. And we choose initial diffeomorphism and define the flow map by nine here, okay? So initial choice of this uh, diffeomorphism, uh, you can, you have to be carefully uh, taken. Using Lagrange, Lagrange formulation, our problem can be rewritten as a 11 here. So besides this uh, mass conservation, momentum balance, and, um, and uh, Maxwell equation, and the condition on the interface, and also the initial date, then you have a flow map equation, d eta dt flow map. Okay, so the ninth thing is everything on a fixed boundary now. Okay, the, the, the better thing is you, you have additional equation d eta dt way, and the eta become part of the problem you are looking for. Okay, and uh, so in the Lagrange like, like variable, uh, so then also the derivative becomes curved the derivatives, and then you, you have to be careful the solution itself, the regularity is coupled with the velocity of uh, the fluids and coupled with the regulator of eta and everything coupled together, okay? However, the real 
advantage of this Lagrange formulation is that uh, in this Lagrange formulation, you have a very simple representation of the other physical quantities. And uh, for example, using this one, you can represent, the, if you know the flow map, you know this Jacobi, and then you know the density. Also, you know the pressure. And that's not the most important part. The most important part is you using this, uh, uh, the time invariance of the G, uh, each transverse and the magnetic field, you can de derive this representation formula for magnetic field. And you see, this metaphor tells you that uh, if you know the flow map, then you know green and eat, then you know the initial other part, you know, you know the Jacobi, then you have a representation formula for your magnetic field. This is very much similar to so-called um, Cauchy formula for vorticity. Uh, if you, uh, there's a long, uh, is a formula by Cauchy in 1882. This formula turns out to be crucial for us, as I will show you. Uh, for our analysis, this play a very important role. That's one important thing. Second important thing is that there are many time invariants. In particular, uh, this proposition tells you the, how the volume changes according to the magnetic field. And also another important thing is the transversality of magnetic field, which is what's kept because this G and this time, time invariant, so initially transversal, nine zero, it will be transversal if the solution is small. Okay, so this is important. In fact, there's another technical point that I can, if I choose my initial flow map, satisfies this condition, and then it turns out for the water sheet problem, I'm not sorry, for the image kind of discontinuity, there's no jump in velocity field. But in fact, by choosing the counties carefully, we can achieve that the, the, law, the, 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 the derivative in the, in the normal direction of the velocity also has no jump. This guy looks technical, but this actually turns out to be in our approach. We are, we are going to use a linear approach. We, do not, we don't linearize the problem. And we do a whisk, a slight viscous approximation of our solution, nonlinear. For that one, in order to avoid boundary layer, this side turns out to be a crucial condition. This can be achieved. Okay. Anyway, so then our mean theorem is the following. We for any m bigger than four, we can define energy. You see, the energy has two parts. The double norm means uh, both uh, up and lower one. Okay. And uh, the thick lump means only on the interface. And uh, look at the 16. The, 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 the first part looks very similar for it because it's a hyperbolic energy. You gain one space, you lose one time. It's a hyperbolic energy, anybody can figure out. And uh, then the, the second term, which is the super norm, HM norm, in both in the interior. But the most important thing, the last one, this red one. The red one tells you on the, on the interface, on the trace, you also have an HM norm, which tells you, you see, the last one is not coming from the embedding, from the, from the eta double norm, because the HM norm, if you take the trace, you will lose half derivative. Okay? So, but we didn't lose. We, we, we are in the same HM norm. That one really comes, as we will say, with an absolute crucial. Okay? That's why we can obtain the theory, why we don't lose derivative, okay? Why we can get that one, I will tell you in, in a minute, okay? So the theorem we get is the following. For any, assuming you have initially, the eta zero is in HM, okay? And my initial is also HM. Initially, you satisfy uh, what uh, I'm actually kind of this, uh, this continuity has. And this satisfies the M minus one out of compatibility condition. So the conclusion is then in the same space, you will have a unique solution. In the same, in the same HM space, okay? You have a unique solution. Furthermore, the, the, the energy defined by 16 is bounded by initial energy, some function of initial energy, okay? So you get a unique, uh, you get a solution, initially having such a space, the solution is such a space, and uh, it's, um, uh, so you don't lose anything, okay? So that's our theorem. So let me, before I say the idea of the proof, let me say, so this theorem tells you, you do not need a tele sign condition. You need nothing, okay? Just by definition, the magnetic field is transversal, and then the problem becomes locally well-posed. 
Okay, so therefore the problem is raised by uh, our Italian school and also by the Russian Trichini, and uh, the both open problem can be solved. Furthermore, this theorem has nothing to do with whether which which dimension are talking about. Two or three doesn't make any difference. Okay, they all works. Okay, and this uh, um, this shows to you the transversal magnetic field has a very strong stabilization impact. Okay, because for the pure fluids, we don't have such a theorem. For the pure fluids, the contact discontinuity in multi-dimensional is still open problem. We don't have we don't have a local stability theorem for that case. Okay. So but the magnetic field save the day. And uh, you you can you can obtain such a theorem. Okay. So this tells you the magnetic field indeed uh, give us some advantage and solve the problem. Also, our theorem tells you there's no laws of derivative. Okay. And the solution, the space they are living in is the same as the initial data. Okay. And so, so the, and also our analysis, we do not use any national intervention. We don't need to write the problem because, as we assure you, my uh, prior estimate depends very much the structure of the solution equation. If you need to write, you lose that structure and you cannot get it. So, therefore, our, our uh, uh, prior estimate. Has to just apply to the equation. So therefore, our approximate solution was constructed by a nonlinear problem and take the limit. Okay. Okay. So that's the thing. I'm, uh, another remark is, you know, I take the case which is chaotic in space and on the strip, but actually you can generalize this to uh, the whole space on uh, uh, the strip and all the things. But in that in that case, you have to take a, a way a background flow because otherwise you, the the norm is well not well defined. Okay, so our analysis, I want to say, so our analysis is really based on, crucial based on transversality of the magnetic field across the interface, okay? And uh, also depends on my Lagrange formulation. So my magnetic, magnetic field becomes, has this Cauchy formula, Zerman formula, which as we will say, play an important role. The last one, which is how do you get a possible solution if you don't, do, if you don't, don't do linear iteration? What we are going to do is we design a carefully, a, a little bit artificial viscous system. And so that one, we do the prior estimate. For that one, take the limit. For that one, you have to be careful because you have an interface problem. If you're not doing very, very well, then you might have one layers. And they will destroy your, your, your prior estimate and you cannot take the limit, okay? So, so that's what I want. But the most important thing is, can, how can you derive the power estimate? So let me, in the rest of time, I just go quickly, how do I get the power estimate? Okay, just indicate to you a little bit. So as what uh, uh, Paul did yesterday, I'm going to use in the total pressure, Q, uh, as one of the main variables, and to rewrite our system as uh, this number 20, because this system is much easier to illustrate what is the main difficulty uh, we have to do. And in fact, as uh, many of the interface problem, many times the difficulty comes from you do the normal derivative estimate. But uh, for this uh, kind of discontinuity, actually, the difficulty already appears when you do the so called Coloma estimate. The conditional derivative estimate already gives you enough headache. And in turn, actually, in this case, the normal derivative estimate is not difficult because the transversality of magnetic field. So let's look at the Coloma derivative estimate. If you do that, it's quite standard. You know, if you do the energy estimate, then you have to overcome all the so-called uh, commutative estimate. And then you have to communicate your derivatives with the, uh, with this dx depends on the solution. And if you do that, if you, if you try to do the HMS estimate, then you will find you have to encounter this, uh, this term, the estimate of Zm, which is m, m, plus, m plus one order derivative of theta. And uh, so therefore, you will lose derivative. You cannot close your HM energy estimate. Well, this one you know, uh, is well known. You can, you can overcome this one by using a so-called good unknown uh, introduced by any arc. So the good unknown in general is defined by 21. Okay, this good unknown, which uh, Paul already showed you yesterday. But if you use this good unknown, you try to do your energy estimate, and after you do all the integral bar parts, the highest order appear. On the right hand is the blue terms. You look at the blue terms contains the derivative higher than energy we have there. Okay, 
So the question is, how can this term be, can be controlled by evaluation? Okay. And then this has two terms. And one of the term has the symmetry structure. So therefore, you can put it into the time derivative and everything will be done. But you look at the 23, the formula. If you have a tennis sign, tennis sign condition, this term not out of control, it has a good sign for you. Okay, this term has a good sign for you. But uh, the worst term is, uh, in, is this, uh, the second term, which contains hard derivatives, has no symmetry sign. You cannot buy the, the into bar pass to push the, get a lot of other terms, okay? And the question is, how do you handle with the second term, which becomes uh, difficult? It is here. I'm going to use a Cauchy formula for magnetic field, okay? The, 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 using Cauchy formula, the linear term for the magnetic field can be rewritten as 24. In the 24, you can, you can say, it's, uh, if the density somehow is controlled, then it's almost linear in the magnetic field. This motivates us, how do we do a different good unknown? Okay, so therefore, instead of original, you say the original good unknown, the BM is, is defined by here. They, they all depends on unknowns, not on the B, but also on eta. On the, so the, but now what I'm going to do is, uh, the second term, I will replace by the initial diffeomorphism. Okay, and also this one by the initial matrix is zero. If you do this, and uh, then in terms of this most difficult term, the boundary term, we will be controlled because they may only contain linear terms in unknowns. Okay, so this actually turns to be very important if you do this one, and then you will say the boundary term will be controlled. The HM norm, the, the M's autoderivative will be controlled by the initial date and by the HM regularity of the, of the flow map, and then plus something but time is small is controlled. Of course, the question is the second term, the HM norm on the surface, which is not here, does not come from the embedding, does not come from the energy. Okay? So, so the question is, uh, um, then how do you get the higher order estimate of the interface? Okay? Then here it comes again. We are going to not using the original good unknown. We are going to use the good unknown 28. Also due to the, uh, the Cauchy formula for magnetic field. Okay? If you do that, then we will gain additional estimate. It is, we, we, we gain some estimate on the interface, sigma m, but uh, not uh, in all the derivatives, only in the direction which coming from is the A0, B0. It's a some derivative of, of a magnetic field. Okay, you gain the uh, one directional derivative estimate. Then we can show, because magnetic field is transversal, this direction, in fact, give you this, this high order derivative estimate by using some kind of von Gary. You control one derivative, you can control the whole area to long estimate. Some kind of von Gary uh, estimate, you can do that. So here, the key point is still is the magnetic field is transversal. Otherwise, you lose it, okay? So with this one, we can, we can get an uh, additional term here and which exactly what you want. That's exactly the, the regularity improvement of the, of the interface. So in this way, you, can, you will get a tangential derivative S or Coulomb derivative S. Then you ask, how about the normal derivative? Well, the normal one, which is more or less like a fixed boundary value problem, you know, people like the Japanese school, Yalagisawa and Matsumura and Su Xin Chen, they already ob observed a long time ago. For MHD equation, if you have the uh, non risk boundary condition means the magnetic field is so you can get the normal derivative estimate by uh, define the norm suitable there. So, so therefore here we can use their similar analysis to show indeed you can, you can get the uh, normal derivative estimate. Open them all together, we can get the estimate. 
Okay, so now let me just uh, in the remaining time, I say a few words. How do you get a constant solution? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to, to do this for the viscous MHD. We just put a little a special, a little viscosity in the momentum equation, which is uh, in, 30, in 31 is this, uh, uh, this term. Uh, did you see this one? Yeah, uh, this uh, uh, viscous. A small epsilon, a Laplace, the curve of the Laplace, x on v. That's the term I have done. Okay, we just uh, we, uh, regularize the momentum equation. Okay, not not, not uh, nothing else. Of, of course, the, if you do this, you have because it is this become a hyperbolic parabolic equation. You have to make sure the conformality condition everything can match. So that's why we add a corrector to say there to make sure you have, you have a high order compatibility across the interface, across physical boundaries, so forth and so on. The most important thing is what condition you will put on the interface. So what we put is very much like all our case. Even though the viscous problem, we put the problem in just, just like, exactly the same as the all our case, which in general case has a problem. So, uh, solvability is a problem. But it turns out this is okay because what I said before, the original problem, you can get additional regularity out. This turns out, uh, this boundary condition, this three way has a lot of jump. Actually, it is a right boundary condition we can put out. And with this one, then you have to modify in, you know, initially that very carefully that we introduce another parameter called that to make sure they can match very well initially on the boundary, so forth and so on. Okay, so the problem is, can you solve this viscous problem? Do you, can, the second question, can you get uh, the question? Yeah. Yes. For me, this is very nice, because we avoid the, uh, Boundary layer, uh, not boundary layer. Uh, allow, uh, avoid the singular uh, for your problem. Uh, so this regularization is very strategic, seems to me. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the real advantage is this regu regularization. They keep all the uh, prior estimate that we can do for the university case. Uh, that's kind of quite, uh, at the beginning, we was, was not so, we thought we were lucky. Eventually, we can get it, yeah. They keep all the things I just mentioned using the equation without, if you do linearization, you will see immediately, you're losing your relative, everything cannot come back. And by using this one, put this guy on, choose this uh, last term, uh, this per se, suitably, you will see avoid all the difficulty to come out. And uh, you don't have a strong boundary layer, and in the, your HM space, you can get the right estimate out. Of course, technically, uh, this, the choice of this procedure requires a little more work. And also, the estimate is not as clean as I said for the invisible case, but you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. In fact, when, when we are solving the real problem, we do not solve the, this problem with this boundary. We solve with this condition, this 33. This more looks like uh, Labor sleep type boundary condition. And then you can imagine why there's a boundary layer. Then, then we show these two boundary conditions are equivalent. Yeah, they are equivalent. Okay. So then our key idea just to show indeed my previous idea for the ideal estimate goes to this artificial viscous system. And uh, we can get the epsilon delta independent estimate, as I said before. And the solvability of this one is very much like a two-piece flow for compressible Levy Stokes equation, okay, which we can establish quite easily. And then we can take that in. Okay, so at the end, we can solve the problem. But, you know, people doing numerical analysis, they will say, oh, do me, I don't believe your theorem because uh, people really try to simulate the MHD kind of this kind of, you see a lot of instabilities. But uh, how do you explain that? We think that this is only short time resistance. If you run very long, you could end up with many, many, many different behaviors. And that's what we are trying to work on. We see if time is going on, 
what it really dynamics, what kind of regularity modes or singularity formation could happen. That's the thing that we are working uh, right now. Okay. So I think uh, uh, my time is up and I will uh, stop here and uh, then just show you there's somebody who is much more energetic than me when he talks. So this is the talk <laughs> given by Piro in, in 2018. In, uh, in in my in my you know in, in, in my seminar room, okay, yeah, in five oh one. Uh, so he doesn't didn't change, right? Looks same. And uh, that's uh, a picture we took when we have a small workshop uh, with some Japanese friends and from other places. This on the top of our institute. Uh, so you can see, Kino has a big money, and. Uh, Here's the Lacula. Uh, yeah, so, so this is Claudia Badas. And, uh, oh, sorry, that's, uh, uh, we, were, we went to a conference org organized by Ogo together. So with our, uh, many of our Italian friends there, we have a very good time there. Kim looks very happy also, look, yeah. And uh, that was a very nice conference and uh, so, I was enjoying the fantastic uh, dinner with Piro. Okay, so that's uh, the last one I don't know how to say it, okay, but I know in Chinese. I wish that uh, Piro, as young as forever, as energetic as forever. I hope I can be able to celebrate your 80s or 90s or 100s birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Zabing. So, time for questions and comments. Yeah, hi, Anna. Yeah. Uh, wonderful talk. And this may be a dumb question, but what happens in the incompressible case? In the, oh, uh, in the, for this problem, the incompressible case is uh, uh, slightly easier for this content wave. But um, uh, we actually, we did it first for the, uh, for the incompressible, but uh, we did not find a very good physical model because in this case that uh, the velocity is uh, continuous. The pressure is already continuous. Right. Only for the compressible, which make a perfect sense, you have a mm. entropy jump mm. and you have a right. density jump, match yeah. everything together. Yeah. But in incomparable case, you have to have two, two kinds of fluids. They have a similar, you can do the similar analysis, but the mathematical model is not clear. But your question you ask is, actually we did the, the incomparable first. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. But but yeah. then would it make sense to study the zero Mach number uh, for this? We haven't done we haven't okay. done, but that's a good problem to look at. Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. The analysis part you can do very similarly, but the physical model we were not so clear. Yeah. Yeah. Some people call that a kind of uh, patch problem, incompressible. You do have such kind of problem, but uh, we, uh, we were not very convinced that that uh, were very physical. Yeah. Uh, Zupi, I, I, I am a little embarrassed because I never do this kind of, of remarks about the reference and so on. But since this touch an old problem that I have studied, I decided to say something concerning Ebbins paper. When it is it's not connected to your, because it's for the regular solution, initial boundary problem, uh, under, under boundary, any boundary, because the problem was the, the boundary value problem. The, in When... Um, I was studying this problem at the same time as Ebbin, but I didn't know about Ebbin. And uh, someone in Trento, Luciano Tuber, comes to me and said, Hugo, send your paper for publication because, and she, he showed me Ebbin's paper, and I sent my paper for publication. My approach was completely different. But by chance for me, there is, in Ebbin's paper, there is a, a strong, very physical, very physical restriction because initial velocity must be subsonic. He has this restriction. In my approach, in the analysis mathematics, the analysis is called normal. I don't need this approach. But reading my paper, you understand why he needs the, the, the initial velocity should be uh, subsonic. And in my, in my approach, is more general and I, it's different. And I don't need just to 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 remark this concerning photos. I would like to show. I have some nice photos with uh, Piero. 
But since these photos, uh, I, 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 if I was not in the first day, I will show it. But in the first day, I think since these photos concerning me too, I decided not to show these photos. But I have nice photos with, for instance, of my uh, 60 birthday, birthday in my there with Ladizhenskaya at Nirenberg and so on. Not at, at, at clearly with, but I, I, I decided not to show this, but it seems I'm showing something because of me. But this, uh, yeah, and uh, okay, I, okay, but just to, to, to remind, I will send my paper to you. You, okay, this paper you. without thank this uh, this physical uh, very physical condition yes okay, okay thank, thank you. you thank you i apologize to lose time which has nothing to do with your presentation this is clear thank you yeah <laughs> um okay <laughs> yeah, so i think that your uh, beautiful result shows how powerful is the method of the Lagrangian coordinates when it is possible to apply it, uh, because it retains some um, the nonlinearity, so it is closer to the problem uh, with respect to the linearized problem that we study with our approach. So it's per perfect. So as we had occasion to discuss already. Uh, at least in this case, um, the possibility to apply the Lagrangian uh, transformation is uh, related to the fact that here with the contact discontinuity, we have the continuity of the velocity speed, and so uh, the possibility to construct a global, global, global in the sense of the two sides of um, the interface uh, a flow map. Yes. That's important. So the question is, uh, would be impossible to uh, extend it to the cases where there is the discontinuity of the velocity field. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Uh, we... And then I have a comment. But thank you. Please. Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, Paul asked me yesterday, and uh, at the beginning I thought uh, we can do it, but uh, then I think I thought a little bit more. I think you are right. I mean, it's, uh, here. Uh, for us, this uh, velocity field is continuous. It's plays a very important role, and we should somehow make, sh make sh sure that the flow map for the interface is well behaved and well defined. If you have a what chase problem, then we have a tangential discontinuity in the uh, in the velocity field. So therefore, you define a flow map, then you have a problem how these two pieces will mesh together, and it's not uh, obvious how do you, how, how do we do that. So that's a good question, but uh, I, I should uh, I cannot give you a quick answer yes or no. But uh, I think that's a good um, good thing to think about uh, whether uh, this kind of Lagrangian transformation, if it applies really powerful, as you can see, which simplify a lot of things because medicine become very simple, very uh, much easier to handle. Uh, otherwise, the linearity coming from the magnetic field becomes extremely difficult. But because of this. Uh, uh, like around the foundation, the Cauchy formula, things become much easier to handle. And it's good, I know things become essentially a uh, linear transformation in a way. So, so but, but you are right, and then this depends very much. This flow map has a very good uh, regularity. And, uh, well, I have to think more if what happens is, uh, is, is the other interface problem. I have a comment, yeah, <laughs> the sure. general comment. Yeah. It's about the stabilizing effect uh, of the man magnetic field for these kind of problems. Because, for, and it it is related to the role of the jump or the velocity. In this case, there is no jump. Okay, the jump is zero. Yeah. And in the other uh, results that you showed before, in particular for current vortex sheets. Yeah. Uh, the jump of the velocity, the jump of the tangential velocity, mm -hmm. has to be small in some sense with respect to some quantity depending yes. on the yes. magnetic field. Yes. So yeah. it has to be small with respect to the magnetic field. And yes. this is strange because no, it, it, is, it is correct. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is correct. But it is strange that we can only find uh, the and 
this uh, stabilizing st destabilization if the jump of the velocity is small and mm -hmm. in contradiction with the result that we had obtained uh, with uh, Jean Francois Coulombel yeah. in our first paper for uh, compressible vortex sheets where instead the jump has to be large enough, larger than the Mach number, larger than square root of two. <laughs> Strange. Um, somehow I, I out of started this, uh, uh, the, the, the jumps in the fluids has to be smaller than, uh, than the corresponding sense in magnetic field. It sounds more reasonable. To, to get to, if, if, uh, at least for the, uh, the, the large time behavior sense, this, this should be more correct thing. Uh, but, but otherwise, uh, the, the, the previous thing where, where we did is, uh, uh, well, this kind of plus similar to what you did, but then uh, the our case, we, we have more things add on. So, 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 so in that case, uh, we didn't. We did actually. We we use in the flight and we didn't use in the uh, the Lagrange formulation. But there is one guy who used them, Lagrange formulation for compressible uh, uh, gas vacuum problem. He claims he get a better result. Use Lagrange formulation. So he avoided using this uh, flight and math uh, re uh, result. But, was part of some Beijing Journal of Mathematics. Uh, his, he claims that uh, even in that case, uh, Lagrange La formulation has better things. Yeah. But uh, that one, still velocity is continuous. Yeah. Velocity is still continuous, yeah. Yeah. I think that, I believe that Mima, uh, um, Pierre's wife, will be not agree that she be even more energetic. It's sufficient like that. Okay. Not more energetic is too much. I see. OK. I will modify it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. It is my time to speak to suppress Hugo comments. <laughs> so, OK, OK, OK. OK, let's take another part. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, 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 of course, uh, you are addressing a, a, a fundamental question of how much the magnetic field can suppress for a certain time the effect of a Rayleigh Terrell instability. So, Rayleigh Terrell instability in plasma is still there, but uh, uh, what, what uh, if I interpret your result correctly, you can say that uh, certain phenomena of Rayleigh Terrell instability are uh, slow down. Uh, by the effect, by the stabilizing effect of the magnetic field. But do you think that really working on the geometry of the interface, it is possible to have, uh, to build up some result of a formation of a singularity for, uh, because if you see, it, for instance, this picture of the mushroom style, Hayley <laughs> Taylor, you see that it's something that is not clearly, this is wrong, but it's not a part of certain things of a splash of singularity. Essentially, you, you have a certain side, the part of the, the mushroom that goes back, uh, touch. It's also essentially, you break down the, there the Lagrangian description because uh, the, there is a, a contact uh, between different pieces of the boundary. So do you think uh, this part would be useful uh, to, to have uh, a theorem of formation of singularity? Yes, um, okay. Um, that's a very deep question, and uh, I know you and uh, uh, Stefan are doing Stephen, uh, uh, yeah. a very nice work for the uh, viscoelastic fluids and yeah. try to see if you have an interface problem and uh, the viscoelastic effects. Uh, yeah. Can this also affect the singularity formation? But that was the, somehow easier. Yeah, free interface problem, all those things. And uh, of course, then a very similar question you will ask that uh, for the uh, similar problem like uh, MIT equation, uh, what is uh, the long time dynamics uh, if you have a, 
uh, the problem of Nike was the policy starts yesterday. You have a very few industries problem, the industries will become big, and what's going to happen? And we actually to look, try to look, see how much analysis uh, what you, you did, uh, we can do that for uh, MHD. It turns out quite difficult. And uh, the, uh, actually, one of my students, PhD student, he just uh, going to graduate this year. He, he worked on this on his PhD thesis and uh, worked for a long time, and then he came up and said, Professor, I cannot do it. Please give me another problem. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it, it, it's, it, it's actually uh, uh, the, uh, the, for the MHT, the answer is not uh, uh, clear. See, either yes or no, this mm -hmm. kind of uh, um, singularity formation we discussed by study from the Princeton group. Yeah, that was and uh, that was yeah, less, the, 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 mine the, was less than a conjecture because uh, it's piloted by the pictures that you yeah. see with, with this experiment. Right. Uh, yeah, so this kind of something we, we, we really want to understand it, uh, in, in a, even in our case, uh, yeah. kind of this community. We want to see the time is getting uh, a little bit longer and see what happens. Because people numerically, they, they compute this uh, entry wave with a lot of instability. And uh, that's what, uh, what uh, Shankini, and when he saw my paper, our paper, he sent me an email and said, do you think this could be right? I can give you tons of numerical simulations which shows these guys uh, very bad behavior. That these uh, these functor functions uh, non elliptic and this this could be right. He tried to uh, to go through over every line of paper to find uh, that the gap somewhere. But uh, but uh, and eventually we were convinced that this mathematics is correct. But uh, but uh, the question yeah, that the numerical simulation shows this really depends on we, we, in which time scale you look at the problem. So we, that's a very interesting problem. You know, we want to look at the longer time, see what's happening, and what kind of uh, singularity will de develop from this kind of interface. interface. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it, can, it seems that there's no simple, uh, easy generalization of what, uh, what people like uh, this. Uh, this guy touch and which call splash singularity. Yeah. Uh, this simple singularity seems quite stable for this type of automation for this called elasticity, but uh, for MHT, many people think it should be similar, but uh, so far, actually, uh, I know the quite a few groups try to look at the problem. And so far, it seems, seems still not clear. Yeah. No, no, but um, I was only inspired by the similarity of the formation of the, yeah. of the geometry of the singularity that you see in the experiment picture. And but my my theory mathematically, I agree with he you. Did, uh, he tried to use in the geometrical approach, and he tried to really to fo follow the the approach by Shatan and uh, Jin to use in the, the geometrical formulation for the ideal MHD, and then, then try to push the yeah. first uh, now general topology, not on just uh, because if you have uh, this kind of uh, yeah. the geometry cannot be simple, cannot be a breadth. You have to be have a uh, more complicated uh, topology. So he tried to use in this approach. Then he can prove something, but not up to the time we can discuss the uh, singularity formation. More question? If not, thanks again for the yeah. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.